Hi everyone, this is Telemachus and I would like to properly present the tool I created some time ago, approximately six months ago. I created the video back then, but uh, there was no voiceover and it's kind of hard to follow up. Uh, hopefully this time it will be easier and uh, better explained. So the, call, the, the tool is called Toxin and it's uh, a tool for exploiting XSS vulnerabilities. And I think it's really cool because uh, this tool can take a weak and lame vulnerability like a reflected XSS for example and turn it into something really wild and serious and uh, this is exactly what's, what we're gonna see here today I have already started it it's awaiting basically a, a, a get request for this handler.js which is basically a handler for serving the poison that comes with this tool here's the repository of the project it's, uh, it's public, you can just go there and read about it and of course download it uh, the handler will basically serve this uh, this uh, Poison, this JavaScript poison, which is the main, the main thing about this tool. This and this uh, a custom HTTPS server, which is basically interpreting the, the the messages and data sent back to the malicious server, the toxin server, by the poison browser. And the best, uh, I think, the best description I can give about this tool is that it can perform uh, something like a man-in-the-middle attack but uh, in the browser's context. And uh, this uh, toxin payload will basically spread across all of the elements of a, of a web page, exploit the XML HTTP request object and intercept the things you would uh, probably guess, like cookies, keystrokes, paste events, input change events, file selections. And here is where the cool part comes because it can also uh, intercept form submissions, both request and response. Uh, also table data even if it's not if it's if it's dynamic it can still capture this information that uh, this tool loves uh, tables it will spider them like never before uh, and uh, most importantly it can also create XSS persistence by basically rewriting the document uh, which is kind of uh, hard to achieve with XSS because uh, there are many things that can go wrong but this tool can do this for you and uh, I think it's it's kind of solid it's not perfect maybe but it's it's really trustworthy i think and uh, really i think it has it has a good sense to assist you with exploiting xss to make a phishing maybe campaigns based on xss vulnerabilities and stuff like that but enough with talking i already bored myself maybe you too i'm gonna make it up to you let's let's see it happen we're going to use an application uh this particular one, I own this domain also. This is an application I made some time ago. It was supposed to go in production and stuff like that, but it never really made it. So I kept it and uh, it has a lot of functions and I use it sometimes and make it intentionally vulnerable to test stuff and make videos like right now. And I'm going to show you what is the, it's, it's basically reflecting uh, a value that is called your name and it was supposed to be uh, this inputs uh, value. Basically, this is something that I came across uh, someday in a pen test six months ago, and I I had the idea to create this tool. And uh, this is completely unsanitized, so basically we can just uh, execute whatever code we want. And what I want to execute is basically I want to include here. If you have experience with XSS, you probably understand this. I want to include a script with the source being. Uh, this handler right here because it's going to create a session with this machine this tool can also uh, comprehend multiple sessions so basically you can use it to to make uh, campaigns exploitation campaigns and uh, you can log and uh, watch all of your sessions through this this uh, let's say handler this this tool so let's do this uh, I have prepared a malicious URL uh, you saw what the vulnerability is. I'm just going to load this uh, handler.js from my toxin.com server. I also own this domain. This tool better works with a trusted domain. You can see I am parsing my certificate files here, the private key and the certificate. And uh, this establishes a malicious HTTPS server, but that is uh, nevertheless using a trusted certificate. This, this actually is very helpful to avoid some errors that might destroy your attack. Uh, stop it and uh, this is a very solid way to, to move forward with XSS in my opinion and this is what's happening so let's poison this thing I'm going to I, I actually put this URL in this file to make it a little more realistic so in uh, an exploitation attempt maybe you would send this malicious URL to someone and if he clicks it 
then uh, this page is going to load but this time and I'm going back to Toxin we can see that hey we received the request for Toxin which is the JavaScript poison and an MITM a man in the middle attack has been launched against this victim's browser and we can see uh, his IP we can see the origin maybe you you made a campaign and you poisoned I don't know maybe you have poisoned more than one website so it's good to know hey where is this victim coming from we can see the user agent and uh, we can see that the stage in, is currently in view because the first session you establish will always be in view and the rest will be logged but it will be in the background so here we will see everything that's happening and basically here we see it captured cookies but actually this website is using http only for at, well, for at least for the domain that it belongs which is this so we don't really see the cookie of this domain we see this that was placed there by toxin and it's not really helpful to us but if, if there was no http only flag we would see it but this is not important right now because anyway we have established our session and we'll see everything that this user is doing and the user is me i am the victim and the attacker right now and we can see that hey we have some information here one form was identified and injected with submit event javascript poison also two inputs were identified and also were injected and let's see what's gonna happen to make this a little smaller and uh let's go here i'm going to write my username which is admin and if i go back to uh to toxin i can already see that hey there was an input value changed and uh, the name of this input is your name and here's the value and i'm going to grab my password which is here I'm just gonna copy it paste it and i can still see now that hey this guy pasted his password here it is i can see it and let's see what is the magic about it because this this is things we have seen before for sure but uh, let's see what's gonna happen after i submit this form and uh, basically we would we would be supposed to leave this uh, well in most cases we would leave this document go somewhere else but let's see what's gonna happen so we logged in we're inside this application we really we actually never left but the the application is working normally and if i go to toxin i can see a lot of things happened i can see that the form was submitted i can see the headers here the the main headers encoding and uh, type method action and everything and uh Basically because HTML uh, responses and requests usually have a lot of content uh, and we would pro probably be flooded uh, right now. I have just uh, uh, set this tool to work initially in a non-verbose output. You can change this with a parameter if you want. And uh, it's basically saving everything in files. So this is the request that we just sent when we submitted this form. And let's go, uh, let's go see what's inside this request we can see when it was uh, sent we can see this header info and we can also see the body if you have been playing a lot with burp and everything in http you can definitely recognize this as a http uh, post request body and uh, here we can see that this parameter you name the value of it was admin and this uh, password value uh, password uh, parameters value was my super secret 2023 but let's say, take a look at the response also which is very interesting and let's see the response is basically this page and uh, what is let's find something characteristic the most uh, juicy is this revenue right here so let's see if uh, this uh, response contains this information gonna cut okay it would be huge but uh if i actually i'm going to open this and uh, i'm going to uh search for the revenue and here it is and i can see it was 1200 euros so basically we intercepted this document we are not even uh interacting with this web server basically everything is happening in the poison browser but we see everything and let's see something juicy because we're still at the beginning here I'm going to this uh, tab user management and uh, you can see what's happening here there are some users and uh, I can see their base64 encoded and, and uh, encrypted passwords passes let's say and uh, I can I have I can do a few things I can deactivate reset password everything privileges of these users and uh, this is a table obviously and uh, I have given them funny names for now it's some of my favorite musicians 
Okay, okay, Celine Dion is not one of my favorite musicians, uh, uh, but uh, Scott Henderson and Steve Lukather definitely are, and Fre Freddie Mercury for sure. And uh, let's see what happened in Toxin though. We can see that we have, hey, table data intercepted. And they, they were saved. We can see a minimized version. It's basically the columns of this table. But let's read this table. See what's happening here. Is it interesting or not? So if I read this, you can see that this is uh, these users. And I have the hashes here also. The roles, the status, everything that I actually see on this table. And if I, if I click, for example, to go... Can I make it... Now maybe a second. Make this also a little bit. Okay, so we can see the updated uh, request. So if I click to here, I see that I just received another ta uh, table data intercepted request, and I'm going to read this too. So if I do cut, I can see that it continues from ten, goes to eleven, and this is the rest of the of the table and this will work with every table if this ta if this web page had 50 tables you would be flooded with requests and they will they would be sp split uh, accordingly because uh, the tool will recognize different tables and they it will split the files for you and i think it's really cool uh, i gave a lot of uh, attention to tables specifically because usually uh, the source is there and i wanted to be able to intercept to intercept uh, web pages even if they're not uh, static if if they are dynamic maybe you will have a table that is updating every x seconds on its own and of course if you had managed to poison that you would definitely want this data sent back to you and uh, let's see something else now let's return to toxin it's clear here a bit Let's submit a request, let's add some data in this uh, thing. You can see that um, something that is really interesting and kind of hard to achieve. It, this is of course not the first time anyone did this, but I think it's uh, really smooth, at least for an open source project that you can just download. I think it's, it's smooth. And uh, let's go to quotations, for example. This application supports a function to add uh, quotations and projects and stuff like that. You can see that we already, we can see that, hey, the user clicked a linked a link with the reference uh, add quotation and uh, I can see the headers the response which is this form I can see what what elements are being poisoned right now and I'm going to uh, fill this form let's say the quotation is for a penetration testing for Microsoft and the value is uh, I don't know 5000 euros of course this is fake information i can see already i got this 5000 and also check out the the keys the key logger for example i'm gonna just uh, i'm gonna strike some random keys on my keyboard and you can see that i get everything that happens even space if i do this is space this is ender uh and i'm going to now submit this let's see what's gonna happen here we have a message quotation added successfully and here we see the server uh, the form submission and the server response that was intercepted. The response doesn't have really much interest because it was actually this message. But the form submission definitely has interesting things inside it. So let's go here and uh, read it. Let's see what, what we can dig at. We can see a long body here. We see that when it was uh, submitted, the headers and here's the, the body. The services, we can see it's penetration testing. This is when it was submitted. It was from Microsoft, uh, and it co it costed five thousand euros. And this is you can say this is sensitive information, and uh, it just intercepted it. The victim would not get it uh, because uh, we're not leaving the document, but everything works normally. And uh, let's go for example, go back to Toxin and go to. I'm gonna clear again, and let's go somewhere else. For example, quotation. Okay, let's go view all quotations, and we can see again we have a table here, and again we intercepted this table, and uh, also the request and response and everything. We can see we went to view all quotations, uh, and you can see that uh, it's quite stable. And I have actually used this uh, this exploit in uh, penetration testings, and uh, 
I've used it against some heavy applications, some applications that had in one page a lot of tables and a lot of forms and a lot of buttons and things, and it was loading a lot of external JavaScript and stuff like that, and it was actually working great. Uh, the flow was normal. You could you could use the application, and uh, you would intercept everything. And I think it's uh, it's a great candidate for uh, exploiting XSS this tool, and this is why I like it so much, and I I wanted to give it. A proper presentation and it can do more than that actually we haven't seen everything of this and let's see a cool feature i'm gonna make this large and uh, this is kind of funny now so here it is having sessions we have now one session we will we can add another browser we'll do it later it doesn't matter right now you can use uh, this command it's called exec and you can give it the file path from your local system from your file system to a javascript uh, file and the session id that you want to execute it against and uh, you can run basically whatever javascript you want against against a, a poisoned uh, browser so i'm gonna do this right now and uh, if you go in the project if you download it you will have this custom scripts folder that i've put some uh, scripts that i made for fun and for testing for example this there's this very lame script i even say it right here the script is completely lame and you should not use it, but let's use it because it's if you're under 18, it's funny. I'm over 18, but I still laugh sometimes with this. So I'm going to do real path scare. And so this is the path in my file system for this. And I'm going to execute this file against this one session that I have. I really need to add tab autocomplete to this. I will update the version because I've, I've left it behind to do some other things lately, but uh. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to run this and immediately return to the browser because this is going to happen fast. You can see that right now it's showing this table. And uh, if I just hit this and return, it's just uh, doing this <laughs> stupid effect uh, just for fun, of course. Uh, but uh, and it's an example of the exec function. But let's do something serious. Uh, because I have also included a serious script, it's called pentest disclaimer. Maybe you, maybe you have done a, a, a phishing campaign using some XSS vulnerability, and uh, you want to, you have reached the point that it doesn't really matter for you to keep doing this, this man in the middle attack. And maybe you can make your presence a little bit more uh, uh, strong or something, and. Uh, prove that your work was really fruitful and maybe you can execute the script which this is what it's going to do uh, so i'm just gonna run it here and uh, this is what it's gonna do it's gonna turn the browser into this your browser has been poisoned as a result of an authorized penetration testing a simulated hacking attempt you have been subject to malicious attacks you are strongly advised to clear your browser's history you may also want to contact your IT department and stuff like that, which is an official disclaimer that, uh, hey, I achieved XSS against you. I poisoned your browser. You should know. Uh, maybe you can, maybe it would be handy for someone someday. Um, so this is the exec feature. It, it will also, if you have a return statement, it will also return uh, whatever the value is. For example, I put this message, pen test disclaimer transformation completed, and here scare transformation completed to know that it worked. And also, if it doesn't work, if the script uh, uh, quits with an error, you will also be informed about it. Um, and let's see, I'm going to... This is actually the second time I'm making this video, because the first, the first time I didn't open the microphone, <laughs> which is really frustrating. But, uh, okay, let's poison one more time this browser. Let me go to this vulnerable application and... Uh, Delete any cookies just to be sure this is going to work. To do it the hard way. What is it? Is clear? Okay. So let's grab this. I'm gonna just copy it. Just to check out the, the second session, I'm going to clear here. And uh, in Chrome now, I'm going to run this and now we have another uh, request for toxin we can see it's chrome let's do 
We can see that it's locked in the background because we already had a session and it's active. The first one is active, this one is not. We can activate it. Activate. And I really need this tab autocomplete. It's gonna happen soon, I swear. I activated it and now I'm going to clear. And if I type something, for example, here, I'm just gonna type. Just wanted to show the feature of the second. Uh, session and you can have of course multiple sessions and uh, control them the same way for example i'm going to execute this pen test disclaimer but first i need to check the session key so let's do this pen test disclaimer against this one now okay uh, sorry yes this is the chrome it has been uh, poisoned and here again I saw hey my custom script executed without errors and this is the output if you're interested to know more about this tool I've written an article about it in this uh, Pentest magazine issue uh, open source uh, Pentesting toolkit which is free to download you can just go to this URL and download it I just have it uh, here open just to show you really quickly some some interesting parts um, I'm describing a little bit about the inspiration how did it come that I found found this idea to create this thing and uh, here's something interesting this is how the interception of requests and server responses works basically you have a victim he's using a poisoned browser and uh, I have split it I have put it as a different icon the toxins poison and what it is doing just to be easier to uh, understand it as a concept and here what's here's what's happening the user clicks something maybe a link or submit a request of a form uh, it's supposed to go to the to the website to the web server and uh, toxin will stop this uh, from happening and uh, it will just uh, replicate this request send it on its own with the xml http request object and uh, grab the response send a copy back to the toxin server that we have been using all this time and also send it back to the poison browser and basically the document would be rewritten and all these things that we have been watching would be possible also something cool is the the way that the i, I believe it's cool the way that it's handling this uh, table uh data interception basically this piece of the of the toxin.js poison which is has a function among others it's called spider tables it's going to and this runs periodically it collects all of the table elements and uh it's uh it's it's uh, checking if it has any data inside actually and if it does it's creating uh an md5 has of the html content of of the table of its table and it's uh, marking it basically uh where is this attribute set? Yeah, it's uh, actually trying to get this digest, which is uh, an attribute added to this table uh, by Toxin. And uh, if there's no digest, it creates the MD5 hash of the inner HTML and it's marking this table. So this runs periodically and it can go and say, uh, it produces the, the MD5 hash again and compares the hashes and says, hey, this table changed. I have to to grab it again and this happens after uh, every two or three seconds or something like that so this is how you get this uh, dynamic uh, tables spidered all the time and uh, what is interesting about this in my opinion is that uh, vanilla javascript comes with no hashing algorithms but i i actually found one uh, online uh but yeah it's not here right now so let's go to the toxin.js file and if we scroll there's a huge this uh, this one function right here is uh actually it's, it was not written by me i found it online and i believe these are the creators at least this is what i found online basically it creates this md5 hashing algorithm in uh in javascript which i let's uh, read the names because uh, i think they deserve some attention these people paul john joe stone and greg holt uh they created this algorithm i think and uh, i took it and used it in this way so maybe you can use it to create your own payloads uh, this is why i'm actually showing this and uh, there are some also other interesting parts i believe in this payload that is automatically doing all this 
uh, interesting things and it's uh, intercept intercepting stuff, poisoning stuff all the time. Uh, if I go to the end, that uh, all of these functions uh, get in order. This is the, the main. Let's say this is the main uh, intoxicate. It will uh, attempt a few things. It will also attempt to fix a few. There are many details for this to be working normally. I did a lot of testing back then when I was developing this. Uh, it will add some meta information to to not break. Uh, let's say the functionality of. Uh, the web page or the scripts itself uh, there are some characteristics characteristics of a web page of a web application that might uh, break this functionality so toxin will actually check and fix some of them and you can see that the the poisoning is actually running in in a in an interval uh, there is a default value here i think it's three seconds or two but you can change it of course if you want uh, and intoxicate is doing all of this magic let's call it like that it's important to check this uh, xss exploitation obstacles also because uh, uh, this doesn't have to do with toxins specifically this has to do with attempts uh, to exploit xss by including external uh, scripts like we did with it and uh, there are in my experience uh, these major uh, obstacles that uh, you can uh, actually most of them you can resolve with just using Toxin. You don't re really need to do something, except of having a, a trusted certificate. Uh, the mixed content error, which is very common. Uh, HTTP browsers basically will not uh, load uh, pages and scripts with mixed uh, content, being that uh, a web page is HTTPS. It will not load an element that is uh, coming from an HTTP source. Also, the uh, cert authority invalid error that we discussed, it, it has to do with a trusted uh, certificate. Uh, Cross-origin resource sharing, of course, uh, option requests, pre-flight requests. If you have been into pen testing applications, you definitely have uh, dealt with this. Uh, a toxin actually responds to options. If I go, for example, to this toxin server, which is doing some of this uh, work, there is uh, an options yes do options and it says uh, which headers it allows this is uh, headers that are used by the toxin.js poison to send information back and forth and uh, uh, this response to requests for example a very important one is the access control allow origin uh, which basically a server is uh, asking another web server hey can i access this resource on you and uh, here you can see that basically this uh, this uh, function will respond to access control allow origin with whatever the origin is. So whoever asks will be welcomed. And this is the concept here. This is what we need to be able to be smooth and uh, exploit XSS this way. And uh, the last one that is the most important probably. And uh, you can say that this uh, script is a proof of concept about how important is content security policy. Because if uh, a website has a content security policy that allows only specific to uh, allows scripts to be loaded only from specific domains, and of course the malicious domain will not be in there, uh, this kind of attacks, not toxin only, but any attack that includes foreign scripts will fail. So this is really important and uh, if you are a developer maybe watching this, this is one of the most important things you can add from a security perspective against XSS cross-site scripting to your application. And here I think it's, uh, I have uh, this section, how to get a trusted certificate. Uh, most people, including me, someone nudged me and uh, I, I actually got it. Uh, believe that you have to buy a domain necessarily, and uh, it is a way to go. Actually, some domains, some you know, random names uh, that are not important, uh, they're really cheap. You can uh, definitely get one with like three dollars per year, and you, of course, you can just let it go after this period if you don't need it anymore, or buy a new one. And uh, but there is also this, uh, at least this Freenom website. That you can create uh, an account and actually register a domain for free uh, it's not gonna be fancy but uh, you will have a domain and you can use uh, let's encrypt which is also free to get to install certificates in one of your machines and uh, use uh, toxin or whatever 
anything else you want maybe you want to host a website you can use uh, a domain from here it's kind of tricky to use it it's very easy for things to go wrong with this but uh, I have uh, put this uh, video instruction. You should watch it before. If you haven't used it before, definitely. Also, if you create an account for the first time, make sure the counter you select matches your IP because it's not going to work and it's not going to tell you why. I I have been there. So this is everything I can say about this. Um, this can be useful to you for other things other than Toxin, of course. And uh, I'm hoping very soon to to make an update, add a few elements I wanted, also tab autocomplete because it's really frustrating right now to use this when you want to search for JavaScript files in your file system. And uh, I hope you, you liked it and thanks for watching.